Hello everyone, my name is Corey Diaz, I'm the CEO of Anthrop Energy. Uh, we are a company with uh, the vast majority of our assets in the United States. Uh, we are a near-term uranium producer, obviously I'm assuming and hoping that uranium price moves in the right direction. Safe Harbor, please read at your leisure. So we have a few reasons that we feel that uh, investors need to look at Anfield. Uh, first thing is that we are in the U.S. Uh, market, which is uh, um, one of the premier mine jurisdictions in the world. Uh, we have multiple substantial deposits of metal to ISR, which is the low cost uh, production uh, material um, uh, method, uh, which would uh, allow us to get the production in a lower price environment. Uh, we have access to existing processing infrastructure. I'll talk about this later, but we are uh, partner uh, in some ways with Uranium One. Uh, we have low permitting risk. Uh, the vast majority of our projects already have permits in place. Uh, we have low expected capital costs. We did announce uh, a preliminary economic assessment on the trolley project in Wyoming a couple of days ago, uh, which has a bet with uh, $6.7 million in pre production costs in the prior production. So uh, we think that's uh, very valuable and ideal asset uh, with which to start production. Uh, Long term optionality. Uh, we have not only ISR assets, but we have conventional assets, including the Shearing Canyon Mill, which is one of only three licensed, permitted, and constructed green wells in the United States. Uh, and we have a highly experienced management board, which I'll talk about later. Uh, we have about 100 years of experience in our board. And you can see from the uh, hexagons on the right, uh, it talks about the assets, specifically 25 ISR projects, the Charlie project I just mentioned, Adjacent to uranium one's really quick operations, which means that we have the ability to produce uh, using uranium one's assets. Because uh, so we have an agreement in place to process up to half a million pounds per year uh, through uranium one, uh, the Charlie PBA, as I mentioned before, and the mill. So our strategy is twofold. In the near term, we're aiming uh, to produce through ISR methods, because that's the lowest cost method to get the production when it comes to uranium. Uh, we do have the blue sky of the conventional mill and our conventional assets. We've acquired not only the mill, but also some other uh, mines, in, not only in, uh, in Utah, but also in Colorado and Arizona. And this two-prong strategy helps us because in a local lower price environment, we can focus on smaller scale, lower cost ISR, but uh, should the uranium price move closer to $60, $70, dollars we have the mill to potentially turn on, and that's about a million pounds per year of production capacity. Marcus profile, you can see we trade on three exchanges. The market cap is about $8.6 million today. Uh, we have a couple of large investors, including Cotter Corporation, which is owned by uh, General Atomics, uh, a private multi billion dollar organization that does one of defense manufacturing for the US. And uh, management has a small uh, interest in the company, too. As I mentioned, our board has significant experience. Uh, we have experience not only uh, in environmental regulatory, Affairs. We also have experience in sales and marketing. We have asset specific experience uh, in our board related to Shooter Canyon Mill and the Charlie Project. And, and we also have a lot of geological experience over 40 years. Our steps to uranium production. Uh, our near term focus is Charlie. As I mentioned, there was a preliminary economic assessment announced a couple of days ago $6.7 million in pre production costs, production of up to half a million pounds per year through. Uh, uranium One's existing resin capture and processing facilities, uh, which we, we believe that uh, this could be one of the lowest cost assets when it comes to production in the United States. Uh, moving past Charlie, uh, we have about 24 projects that we acquired from Uranium One back in 2016, uh, ISR products in Wyoming. Uh, there's about 30 million pounds of historic resources associated with those projects. Our aim is to look at the most prospective of those assets get economics for those in order to create a pipeline that would follow on behind Charlie, uh, looking at another 10 to 50 million pounds. So you have uh, essentially my life of 20 years plus. And then at Blue Sky, as I mentioned before, in a very high uranium price environment, we'd look at that turning on the conventional mill. The cost of refers to mill is between 35 and 40 million dollars, which is a lot cheaper than trying to build your own mill and also finding regulators and environmentalists uh, to find a place where you can put a mill. Uh, but that mill is actually licensed uh, for about a million pounds per year of production capacity. So between the two uh, production methods, we have about a million and a half pounds of production capacity available to us. 
which would make us a significant player in the U.S. uranium market. Here's a map of uh, the key assets that we have. As I mentioned, we've got ISR projects and we have conventional assets. You can see that they're all within the four corners um, in the U.S. Uh, we do have a small project out in Saskatchewan. Uh, we bought that. We're just trying to be opportunistic and get a top hold in Saskatchewan, assuming the prices start to be up. The Charlie project, as I mentioned, this is the project on which we have a PEA. Uh, we have pre-tax IRR of 60%, NPV of roughly $19 million, pre-production cost of $6.7 million, annual production of just under 250,000 pounds per year uh, at a you know, direct cost of $23 a pound, which is uh, very cheap uh, in relative terms. You can see the reason was about 4 million pounds. We acquired this from the Cotter Corporation along with some assets in Colorado, which I'll mention later. Uh, but the, the beautiful thing about this asset is that it sits in between two of Uranium One's existing mines. Uranium One has mined on either side of this project, so uh, Uranium One's very aware of what we have here and what the, uh, the potential return could be for us. Uh, we can actually pipe this material directly to Uranium One's satellite plant. So we don't have to build our own satellite plant. Uh, we don't have to construct anything outside of what's there already. So that's why the cost is so low. And we'll be working in partnership with Uranium One to move this asset forward. So uh, the expertise that will be on this project will be Uranium One's expertise. Other Wyoming assets I mentioned, we've acquired 24 other products from Uranium One. We did that back in 2016. You can see that we're all over Wyoming. Uh, most of the assets that we're interested in in the near term are up in this quadrant, Taylor Ranch, Mouse Ranch, Rito Creek, Pine Ridge. Those are all within the area where Uranium One has its existing processing facilities. Uh, we have started to do some economic assessments on those. You can see them on the left. Uh, we plan to go through the majority of those products and get economics. This is a very cheap way to start adding pounds to our balance sheet because most of the products have historic resource on them already. We just need to upgrade them to 43101 standards. The Velvet Wood project, this is a product that we picked up from Uranium One back in 2015 along with the Sugar Canyon Mill. This is a very high grade resource in Utah, uh, relatively close to the mill, and would serve as the first pounds into the mill once the mill has been refurbished. Other assets that we hold on the conventional side in Utah, Colorado, and Arizona, as I mentioned, the mill. Uh, the Frank M deposit is a mill, uh, sorry, a mine, which is right next to our mill. Uh, it's a lower grade mill, probably 0.1%, um, so it probably needs to be upgraded uh, with the other materials in order for it to be economically viable. Uh, the Westlow project, as I mentioned, this is another asset we acquired along with the Charlie project from Cotter Corporation. It has a historic resource in Colorado of 11 million pounds of uranium, 53 million pounds of vanadium. Uh, so there is a vanadium story uh, intertwined with our uranium story. We have a couple of options for that. The uranium can actually serve to uh, elongate the life of our mill, going from, call it, sub-10 years to over 20 years. Uh, in addition, we could potentially send that material through our mill for both uranium and vanadium, or we could look to partner with somebody who has a vanadium circuit in the near term in order to uh, leverage the 53 million pounds of vanadium that are sitting there. We also have the Finley Tank pressure pipe project in Arizona. This is not a focus of ours in the near term. Uh, we're not a pressure pipe miner, uh, but we do know of other parties uh, in the industry who would have an interest in that asset, a partner in that asset. And then finally, we have a royalty portfolio where we hold full royalties on the assets of three other publicly traded companies. So not only can we benefit from a higher price environment uh, directly, but we can also directly uh, benefit from that. So our pure comparison, uh, when we look at uh, the market cap for, uh, on a resource basis, market cap to resource basis, you see that we're trading well below a number of our peers and well below the average. So our price could, uh, at the average, would be three times where it sits today. Um, so you know we think we're, we're clearly undervalued despite the asset base that we do have and the new PA that we have in place with a line to production. Another thing I'd like to touch on, I'm not sure if anyone has been paying attention to what's happening down in the U.S. when it comes to the Trump administration, the 232, uh, Section 222 investigation that took place, and the recommendations that were provided back in July. Uh, the, the idea here is that the U.S. market is, is dwindling. 
and uh, there's not enough stimulus in place for U.S. producers to start moving into production. The idea is that the U.S. government will be looking to find a way to facilitate production uh, by U.S. producers going forward. Uh, the decision that was made, or not made in July, had, uh, had a negative effect on a lot of the U.S. producers or U.S. companies. Uh, there is a working group that's in place right now, put together by the Trump administration. A recommendation is supposed to be provided to, uh, to Trump uh, by mid-October. The recommendation is supposed to focus on improving the lot of the entire uh, production, um, I guess not so much production, but more of the, the value chain related to nuclear, which includes U.S. producers. So there is a possibility that uh, there has been a trial balloon that's been put out there that said that there, the government may end up buying material directly from U.S. producers in order to stimulate production. Uh, if that were to happen, there are only a handful of players in the market that are actually close to production, probably five or six, which would include us. So we have a significant benefit from getting positive news from the administration. So in summary, as I mentioned, we are a low-cost, near-term producer, uh, as, as shown uh, through the recent PEA put out on the Charlie Project. Uh, we're talking about $6.7 million of pre-production cost, $23 million, sorry, $23 a pound of uh, direct cost for production. Uh, we have both ISR conventional assets, so we can turn on in a low-price environment ISR, and in a high-price environment, we can look at conventional. Uh, we know that cement demand is increasing significantly around the world. However, production continues to dwindle or fall off based on the low price. Uh, so we think that you know, in the next two to three years, we'll see uh, significant rebounding in the uranium price as the market tends, starts to understand that uh, the supply demand balance is not sustainable. That's it. Any questions? Yes? Uh, yes. Uh, what's the price of uranium today? That's about $25 a pound in the spot market. And what's been the high and low this year on uranium? Sorry? What's been the high and low on uranium price? Uh, this year, in the past 12 months, it's probably been about $20 in the low and probably about $29 a high. And what will it cost you to produce again? The direct cost for the Charlie project is about $23. $22. But that doesn't include any of the capital expenditures. No, naturally not. Okay, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, thank you for your time. Actually, I have a oh. question. Um, you just completed your PA. Uh, I guess, what is the real cost or, or price that uranium needs to go up to actually have U.S. production? That's a good question. I think uh, if you're operating the ISR space, you probably need a price um, greater than $50 per pound in order to make uh, ISR product viable for us. Those are for the cheaper markets. If you hold any conventional assets, you probably need a price closer to $60 to $70 in order to make those assets viable. Thank you. Any other questions? Great. Great. Thanks very much.